Good morning. Uh, this is my kitchen and this is where I make a lot of my papier-mâché bowls. Down the other side you will see it goes through into a big window out into the garden and that's where I tend to paint for jewellery and paint paintings. But this is more of a workshop area. So here we go. I'm going to show you bit by bit what we're going to do. I'm going to make a series of videos showing different ways of making papier-mâché pulp and different layering methods as a sort of reference background um, that you can dip into whenever you like to make the future things we're going to be doing. Okie dokie. Now for this recipe I'm not going to be using scales at all actually so I could just move those away and I'm going to be mixing it up by proportions only so I'm going to use this old earthenware chicken roasting French affair because it just works perfectly and I'm going to be using Financial Times because A it's pink and it's very good for doing different colours of pulp and different colours of layers and it's somehow or other the ink doesn't come off it it's just a better quality paper I suppose and I'm going to mix it normally I would mix it with sawdust but in lockdown I haven't been able to get hold of any sawdust but I could get hold of these blonde coloured wooden pellets which you are, can use for cat litter and what I've done is I've soaked them over well actually I was going to say overnight but it really takes such a short time it's quite wonderful watching them like uh, some kind of magic thing coming out of a, a hot spring the way they just explode and grow within the water and then they, they just they're fine then and what I shall do then is I shall put the Financial Times into some water and then it only needs to soak for a few moments and I can transfer it into an old blender which works perfectly actually so I'll just get that in motion for you. Here we go. Literally just soak it in there for a moment or two and, and tear it up roughly whilst I'm with it. I know a lot of recipes say soak paper overnight and boil it for hours and hours but I found you don't actually need to do this. So start to put it in here. You don't have to put a lot in. Adding the wet and damp um, pages newspaper, I'm using Pink Financial Times, into the blender and then I add warm water. I haven't boiled it, I've actually taken it from hot tap but you could just heat it up a little bit and put the top on there and then <laughs> and that's it for that stage And then I'm going to pour it into the sieve. Might do a bit at a time. Just roll it over and over on itself because it is just fine paper pulp at this stage. Now the other thing I think that I do which is a bit different from most of the videos I see, I've been doing this for how long? 30 years I suppose, if not longer. I, um, I press it gently. See if I do it that way. I press it gently and just roll it over slightly. A little bit like making a very delicate clay or something. Now I don't want it to be in any way compressed so for me that is ideal but I do know that for most other people that make th these things there's too much water in that you see um, but I, I want lots of water <laughs> left in mine because when you add the sawdust and when you add chalk or whatever other binder you're going to add 
the water just pulls it all together and I'm going to add PVA glue too in this one and that also helps bind it together because PVA glue starts off very very thick and it's you can easily water it down and it's still incredibly strong. repeat a few times. Next stage it's just a matter of mixing the sawdust and the paper pulp together and it doesn't have to be done thoroughly because we're going to be mixing it pretty well all the time for the next couple of stages. So that's really all that needs to be done at this stage. A rough mix At this stage I've left the uh, sawdust and the paper pulp to soak overnight so the sawdust is really as wet as it can be and then I will squeeze some of this water out because I'm going to add PVA glue but I still want it to stay quite moist. I've done the rest already. i um, just going to wipe my hands. <laughs> and put some Vaseline on, which is a really good barrier when you're working with PVA glue. I do have a spatula, but I do like to work, work with my hands. So I'm going to add some baby oil onto here, like that. And because I'm working with filler, all-purpose filler, which has got a little bit of sort of edges towards plaster of Paris, you know, um, as I haven't got any whiting or marble dust, which is my first choice actually. So I'm going to add that into there. Not a lot, but just enough to give it a sort of certain stiffness as I go on. It's a bit like baking. <laughs> there we go. So that's sort of just like that. And then I'm going to add <clears throat> PVA glue to taste, as it were. Then I'm going to start mixing this up. It will start to go a paler colour as the PVA makes all that uh, plaster filler mix in. bag here I can put it in and keep it for a little while I don't want the air to get in it but I've also got one of these containers which I think I'll use for the time being and, and then I'm going to let it sit for a bit the baby oil will retard the filler from going off and going hard I could use it straight away but I sort of prefer there we go. That feels really good actually. So I'm just going to plonk that into there. in the fridge until I'm ready for the next stage. Next stage. Start with, I need, I keep water here. My hands have got some Vaseline on. I hope it'll be enough anyway. So this is like that now. It's quite soft but because I've got a, a drying cabinet over here that my son made for me, it's a wooden 
um, quite a big kind of cupboard really and it's got two glass shelves in and a, a lamp which is designed for drying off little day old chicks you know when they're born and they're all wet and miserable and don't know where they are and then they just get fluffed up in the warmth so it it dries them and it also perfectly dries out my papier-mâché so what I do is I start in the middle and I start just patting it out gently and then carry on like that a bit at a time so and then I can smooth out what I don't need. This is in a really good condition. I mean, some people might find this a bit too soft, but I find it really, really creamy. I really like it. And I need to have damp fingertips just for going around like this. What is a friend? It actually aids everything really it keeps everything moving and alive and and then the heat will just evaporate off all the water it isn't needed this is just made out of um you know the the bag the brown paper wrapping that comes with amazon deliveries over lockdown because that's the only way i can really get things i haven't been able to find whiting in sufficient quantity really i should just go to the builder's merchant and get a big sack of it and possibly even a sack of sawdust I hadn't really thought about that maybe I've got used to not going out I like not going out <laughs> I like being in my world here in my studio so I'm just slowly going around the edge and moving out what I've already got down here and then I might go back that way. You have a sense of how much is there because you can feel the resistance. And the more you do this, you, the more you know. It's a bit thinner in the middle, you see. So I'll just do that and then start to gently move it over and smear it around. And then we're starting to creep up the edges like this. I just press it where I want to go because can't have too much because they can always take that off at the end and then start again I think what I'm going to do I'm working on a series of ideas at the moment that I want these uh, plates to look like plates that have come out of a, a sea wreck so they've been covered with sand and barnacles Maybe they started off as fine porcelain, but maybe they also, some of them started off as very heavy, rustic things. And I can take my imagination into other realms and I can make the, the, the outer rim here that you can't really see, it'll be on the back, it will be gold leaf. Because gold being the purest of the elements, doesn't tarnish, it doesn't dull, it can't discolour. And I know when I paint um, for jewellery and I put down gold leaf first of all on size and then I paint around it, it's fantastic because the gold dispels the paint. It's pure magic and it's a fantastically enjoyable way to paint. So first, you know, I would kind of put my design down and then go over it in gold, acrylic gold writers, gold size and then um, let it dry, it doesn't take long, and then put the gold leaf on. There, now I think that that's okay. Now what I'm going to do, I keep dampening my fingers, put that back in there. I 
just want to get a little bit of gold around some of the edges. I'm going to leave it like that and just make it less thick there. There. Now that's going to go into the drying cabinet. I'll show you my drying cabinet, although it's quite difficult to get um, an accurate view of it because it's got this bright light in it. We'll see what I can do. So, numero uno into the cabinet. This is the um, wooden cabinet and the, wood, the, the glass shelves and the light here. I've turned the light off because it just is such a big bright orange light that it will um, completely confuse what I'm trying to show you. This is part of a series of those plates I was saying um, that look as if they've been under the ocean for ages. So this will be gold or silver and this will be made as um, gold or silver and this will be made sort of like a sort of barnacled area. And I put these in last night, I made them last night, but I will leave them in anyway. Um, this one is a little tray, like that. I like these. And I make all the um, papier-mâché card, so everything is based on paper and glue. And so I just layer and layer papier-mâché together and then cut it out. And then I think I've got a video I can show you where I cut out the edges and then attach them. And then when that's dried, it's quite hard, I put that on. And I can sand that down if I want to, or I can just coat it with layers of gesso and smooth it. I haven't decided yet. That's not going to be one of these Ocean Treasure series. Um, and then I've got others just in stages. This one is still quite, you know, it won't come out, it's still quite damp, unfortunately. It's attached to the bottom, which is what I want it to be, otherwise it would be very um, wonky. Same thing here. This is made with layers. Now, because that's... The thing about papier-mâché is that, you know, I've got an indentation there, and if I was a purist, I'd think, well, that ought to be flat. But actually, I'm not, so it doesn't have to be. And also, it gives me so much room for other things. You see, I could put some paint on there and just cover that area there with resin and it would look like a pool of water. And I still haven't decided where the, I'm going with this yet. That's got to dry out. That's one using up just the last bit of the um, papier-mâché pulp last night. And that hasn't got far, but you can do it in stages. And then this one is a mould. So that's all it needs to be, because that will then be used to make bowls on top of. A lot of these started off as moulds, so that's what they were going to be, but got, I got carried away because they suddenly became something else. And this is another one of the treasures, which I can... I'm very looking forward to doing these. And this is the one that we've just made. So that's wet and ready to go in. And it's, it's quite beautiful. It actually almost looks like the sun when the sea's gone out. So I'm working on a, a sort of sea theme, Ancient Voyages. Yeah, Ancient Voyages is a good title. Okie dokie.